What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. This one's a little bit different. I have today my wife's E90 BMW 3 Series. This is a 328i from 2011. And um, just in the middle of doing probably one of the worst jobs that a person has to do on one of these E-Series BMWs, and that is replacing a starter. Uh, here I go, here's the old starter. And our symptoms were, this thing did not die completely, uh, but it was on its way out. It was uh, intermittently not starting, and the wife's getting ready to take the car on a trip, did not want it leaving her stranded, so it was time to do a starter. I've done a couple of these before. They're horrible. If you've done one, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, so I was actually willing to pay a shop to, to do the labor and put this thing in, and I could not find a shop locally other than the dealership to do that and I did not want to pay dealership money. So I bit the bullet, FCP Euro, bought the parts, got the whole kit to do a starter replacement. By the way, I'll leave a link in the, uh, the description for FCP Euro, this is not what this is about, but uh, great price, giving you a brand new OEM starter, uh, both replacement bolts, because these are torque to yield, you do not reuse them, uh, you're asking for a world of hurt if you reuse this. So two brand new bolts, and then it also comes uh, with the gaskets, uh, to put on the intake manifold uh, because when you pull that out you should replace those as well um, so anyway all that being said setting it up this starter's out but this starter gave us a fit and here's what this video is about do not click off at this point if you have any chance that you're going to be doing a starter on an e-series bmw listen up i want to help you with something there's lots of how to's on how to replace a starter i'm not getting into that watch one of those videos there's several good ones Today is all about this hateful thing. This bolt right here lives on the backside of the engine, right up near the firewall. Uh, once you get all the mess out of the way to get to a starter, you're actually down to just two bolts. You got one in the front that goes toward the firewall, and this guy in the back near the firewall that comes forward toward the front of the car. Naturally, I don't know why they put the long one in the back where you can't get to it. Well, therein lies the problem. It is so hard to get to in fact, Benny, once you bring that in here, try to show them where this is. If you come over here, uh, you can see that bolt way on down there. Uh, there you go. Right there, I'll point to it on the screen. It's kind of bl blurry. Uh, but that right there is the bolt that you have to get to. And uh, I have replaced it. Uh, this is the old one here. But in the process of trying to get it out, this old bolt, if you look at it, has a little bit of corrosion on it. And uh, between being hard to get to and that little bit of corrosion from being in the car for over 10 years, uh, this guy was good and stuck. And because it's so hard to get onto, we had a problem. We started rounding off these threads. Now ignore that, that's something from my process of getting it off. But you can see where these threads are starting to get boogered up. This is an E14, uh, basically a reverse or what they call an external Torx, uh, both the front and the back are the same size. Problem is, because there's so little room, it is hard to get that socket to sit on this guy uh, because you're right up against the firewall with your ratchet wrench. Uh, in fact, you have to get as slim a wrench as you can to get on that thing. So if you start that way, <clears throat> get you a good quality socket, get you a slim wrench, you might do okay. I would recommend put a little bit of penetrating fluid on it because uh, you can see the other end of this sticking out uh, from uh, through the starter. So you can pay it, spray a little bit of penetrating fluid on it, hit it with a little bit of heat, and uh, if you can get a slim wrench to get back there, you might avoid everything that I'm about to tell you. Uh, but we didn't think about all of that, and I didn't have a slim wrench at the time, so we ended up buggering up uh, the threads on this E14 bolt. At that point, even once I got a slim wrench and was able to get that socket on there, this stuff was so messed up, it just would slip on it and actually make it worse. So at that point I knew I gotta stop, I gotta figure this out. I talked to a couple of people who uh, are smarter than me. One of them's actually holding the camera, his name's Benny, he's been helping me with this project. Uh, the other one is Doug, you've seen Doug on the videos before. Both of these are smart guys. We came up with all sorts of ideas. Some of these ideas were uh, a little bit creative, uh, you might say. Others were, hey, if those ideas don't work, we're gonna get destructive. Uh, for starters, no pun intended, for starters, this is throwaway. There's no, uh, there's no core on this thing. The bolt is throwaway. So we considered drilling it out. We considered using uh, an oscillating tool and coming through uh, and cutting it off because this ultimately threads in to the starter. 
and it goes through the transmission, which would be right here. So we don't want to damage the transmission, but we can um, we can sacrifice the starter and the bolt themselves. We have to, and if we can get this part eliminated, this will just slide out. We didn't get there though, because we tried one of the creative ideas first, um, and I would recommend this, but if it doesn't work, then maybe try one of the more destructive ideas. What we ended up doing was taking, I'm not sure where it's at right now, uh, but we took that E14 socket, uh, pointing to it, I'm not even seeing it. <laughs> where are you at? Oh, right here, thank you. All right, we took this E14 socket. Now, I tried this with JB Weld putty first. Did not work, it slipped right off. Tried it with the JB Weld two-part epoxy, the one that's got over 5,000 PSI of force. Put some of that stuff, I put it on the head of the bolt while it was still in there, kind of painted it on there, jammed a bunch of it into this, and I knew at that point I'm sacrificing it, although we did get most of it out, so that's actually reusable. But then I took that thing and I slipped it on there uh, back behind the firewall, so it's wedged in there like this against the firewall, you know what I'm trying to say, and let it cure for about 24 hours. Then, when I came back after 24 hours, before I started wrenching on it, I sprayed more penetrating fluid on this side, I hit this whole area with heat, and with that JB welded together, I was able to loosen it up just enough to break that free. Now at that point, you're up against the firewall, and you gotta get that socket out of there. Uh, so beating on it was able to break that free and get it out of there. And then we were able to use some other tools and our fingers just to finish backing it. The rest of the way out, you'll have to wiggle it out and get that out. So the point of this video is not to teach you how to install a starter. Lots of great videos. If I remember, I'll try to remember to link somebody below uh, to a good video about that. This is to teach you how to get this stupid bolt out if you manage to bugger up the threads like we did. And uh, our trick with JB Weld, heat and penetrating fluid, got this thing out before we had to get destructive. Worst case scenario, you could come in and you could try to drill this out. You could take that oscillating tool and where this butts up uh, against the transmission, you could try to come between them and cut it off and then it will fall out. Um, of course, you wanna be very careful because you don't wanna damage the transmission in the process. But try this first. JB Weld, heat and penetrating fluid, and it should come out. It worked for us, even though these threads could no longer support, um, they could no longer support uh, the socket sitting on it anymore. We welded it together with JB Weld and it got it out. I hope this is a help to you. I know this is not a normal Crossroads rebuild video. This is, uh, maybe we'll include this in the E90 maintenance series that we started years and years and years ago with a different E90. Um, but I hope this is a help to you. If it is, go ahead and drop me a like, a comment, and subscribe. Tell me about your horror stories and what you did to fix it. If you got any advice for anyone besides what I just said, maybe drop that in the comment section below. And then, of course, stay tuned because we've got more rebuild videos coming, restoration videos on the 55 Chevy, so on and so forth, so much more coming. Uh, I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.